It's projected that by 2050, one in six people in the world will be over the age of 65. And as we age, we become more susceptible to disease. We are living longer, but not necessarily healthier lives. More than 90% of older adults have at least one chronic disease. So the demographic shift will create a great tsunami, uh, resulting in a dramatic increase in morbidity and a burden on our healthcare systems. But what if science can manufacture a drug that keeps our bodies younger and therefore healthier? Well, scientists are trying to do just that, looking for ways to slow down the processes that cause aging with the help of centenarians, people who reach at least 100 years of age. Vera Gorbanova is a professor of biology and medicine at the University of Rochester and the co-director of the Rochester Aging Centre. I've been studying ageing and longevity for probably 30 years. So I could say all my career I've been devoted to it. And why? Because it's just a very fascinating question. It affects everyone. And it's also a very interesting scientific problem, maybe one of the most difficult problems. SIRT-1-6 is an enzyme encoded by the SIRT-6 gene, which appears to function in several molecular pathways related to ageing. From studies in uh, animals and model organisms like mice or fruit flies, uh, we already knew that if you put in extra copy of SIRT-6, uh, these animals start to live longer. So for, from the animal studies, it seemed it beneficial. We also did another study that was published in 2019, where we compared SIRT-6 activity across species with different lifespans, from mouse to like squirrel and beaver and naked mole rat. And the SIRT-6 activity correlated very nicely with lifespan. So those animals that live longer had more active, stronger enzyme. Uh, of 36. So then we ask the next question, okay, how is it relevant to humans? Uh, but will long-lived people also have more active 36? Because if yes, so that would mean we want to enhance 36 activity in people that may be beneficial. Research revealed centenarians were more likely to have this enzyme. And we found that it works better. <laughs> <laughs> and better than, I would say, like a wild type 36, like, you know, maybe, like, you know, you and I <laughs> may have like a normal wild version, uh, but these very lucky people that live to 100, some of them, not all of them, some of them have this unique version of 36 uh, that, you know, was better in many ways. But the professor says how our DNA is packaged may have an even more profound effect on ageing. When we're younger, our DNA is packaged neatly, but as we get older, it gets messier. The professor likes the analogy of a tidy sock drawer. Uh, so that's what happens with ageing. We have some systems to put the socks back in order, but it's not perfect. And as we get older, it becomes very disorganised. Professor Gorbanova and her team have been searching for variants in the SIRT6 gene that may increase lifespan. So genes that were supposed to be active now become silent, the silent becomes active. And SIRT6 is one of those proteins that is <laughs> supposed to put things back together. And this is why, it, you know, maybe having extra activity is so beneficial to just prevent this age-related mess. They also tested other functions related to longevity and SIRTU6. Like ability to repair DNA, ability to silence transposons. So transposons, it's like junk DNA in our genome, parasites. Uh, we want to keep them quiet. Actually, as we get older, they start to get, you know, on the loose and be expressed, which also is a problem. So that's another reason why we want chromatin our DNA to be packaged in correct way because we don't want all these characters to get activated. And so 36, it's one of the function is to keep them quiet. But a drug or drugs that help activate the correct variant of sirtuin 6 is a long way off. However, there are dietary compounds you can take, such as seaweed, which contain a molecule called fucoidin that can activate sirtuin 6. So what's the next step in your research? Well, we go in many different directions. Uh, of course, yeah, we look for activators of 36 uh, to really help people. 
uh, make people healthier. Uh, we also want to just understand the basics, how it works. Uh, we want to understand exactly how Cert6 helps rejuvenate. And then maybe if, if we learn about other partners in this game, uh, then we will have other targets to activate. So more targets to develop drugs to. Uh, we also study long-lived animals, so that's like another part of my research. We study naked mole rats and the bowhead whales, and we look into mechanisms that make them live longer and healthier. On the other side of the state of New York and America at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Professor Zeng Dong Zhang is taking a different approach to understanding longevity. He and his team are studying human ageing and age-related diseases by analysing genetic data of centenarians and their offspring. They're also getting input from model organisms, identifying sets of genes that work together, which are known as conserved gene pathways. So those pathways can actually modulate the ageing process and um, affect lifespans of animals. So one major question in general science is, are such pathways identified in model organisms relevant in humans, right? So our study showed that human lifespan can be influenced by rare variants in the same gene and gene pathways of aging identified in model organisms. There are different aging pathways, but the professor has found the Wnt pathway is key. We basically discover protective rare variants in the wind signaling pathway. So they contribute to longer lifespan among individuals with high genetic risk of Alzheimer's disease. So what is a wind signaling pathway? So wind signaling pathway is one of the key pathways regulating development and stem cells and also with a very tight association with cancer. Does longevity have anything to do with the absence of genetic variants that cause disease? Centenarians uh, do not necessarily have less bad rare variants. They, it's more likely that they have good variants to basically protect them from those bad genes. Identifying these rare variants is the first step. Identifying a drug that mimics the variant on the ageing pathway is next, and there have been successful examples of this in medicine, such as an enzyme involved in cholesterol metabolism. That's how actually the inhibitor of this enzyme uh, has been designed, tested, actually has been recently approved by FDA for treating uh, cardiovascular disease and a lower cholesterol level. So it is a good, uh, very I, I think inspiring story um, for discovering drugs using this approach. The professor and his team will continue to look for more protective variants and other gene pathways. So then hopefully in the near future, uh, we will test what we found using uh, existing drugs or new chemical compounds and see whether we can discover anti aging drugs.